Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? You can write on the chat. Like, uh, okay, that's good. So, uh, this is the one. This is uh, Dr. Mehra Azuz. And I hope uh, everyone is safe and uh, healthy. Um, and I wish you like uh, a successful start. Yeah, in, in the in the fourth year. So, um, uh, in today's lecture, uh, I'm gonna discuss with you the the course syllabus, uh, and also I will give you an introduction to the contents of course systems one. Uh, what will what will what will be covered in Power Systems 1 and what will be uh, delayed uh, to Power Systems 2 because like I offer two courses. One is uh, Power Systems 1, which is in the winter that you are currently uh, taking. And the second one is actually Power Systems 2, which is in the summer. So um, uh, I allow you to share your, uh, your videos if you have uh, like, uh, a camera you can show your uh, your video like just like an introduction like typically you know um i talk to students in the first lecture we you know we see each other we uh, you know we uh, we share ideas about uh, the interests why you are interested in power systems why you why you uh, take my course why you're interested in power in, in general but since uh, this is the first time for me to teach Power Systems 1 online, like this course was offered last year uh, in class and uh, the pandemic started in March and we had to switch to online teaching after we, we you know, we know, uh, we knew each other, like, I mean, the, the, the instructor, the students, uh, we, did, you know, we did the introduction in the first lectures and also the students uh, saw, uh, saw me in the lab. Uh, and you know, uh, like Power Systems 2 is actually a continuation to Power Systems 1. So the students who saw Power Systems 1 already knew me when they joined Power Systems 2. So, uh, but this year it is different because um, this is the first time uh, for you and also me to, to meet and uh, work together to learn you know uh, or to enter the power field uh, under my uh, supervision uh, that's why um, if you want to share your uh, your video uh, this is uh, fine like typically I don't allow students to share their videos but uh, in the first lecture uh, I will do that just an introduction and feel free of course not to share your video uh, but I, I will be sharing my video uh, in the first lecture and maybe uh, in the beginning of all lectures uh, so that, you know, students know their uh, instructor. Uh, so um, uh, if you don't have uh, uh, anything to say, let me explain uh, how online teaching works. Uh, I know, like, most of you have uh, experience uh, or I mean work I mean with online teaching uh, and learning uh, since last March uh, but in part system let me share uh, my uh, my experience or how the course will be managed so uh, in this course we have lectures and tutorials labs uh, so everything will be conducted, as you know, through uh, Blackboard uh, online. And the good thing about Power Systems uh, is that all the labs can be conducted uh, remotely. Uh, we don't need uh, a physical lab uh, because we conduct uh, or we uh, like uh, the labs are software based. So we will be working with a Power System simulator, uh, and I will give you all. The details once we start I mean the labs and also talk about the, uh, the project uh, of this pro uh, of this course but the good thing here is that we don't need physical labs everything will be uh, conducted uh, online even the lab and 
the lab uh, technologists uh, have created uh, a virtual lab for you guys. I think you may have, uh, like you have worked with it before. Uh, so you can use your UNID and password and go into the uh, university server and access the software that we will be using. But the labs, I mean, tutorials, uh, lectures will be conducted through Blackboard. Uh, this is uh, this is how the course will be uh, I mean, instructed. Um, I allow students to, of course, ask questions. So you can write on the chat. You can write. You can write a question uh, even while I'm I'm teaching. So uh, uh, I will look at the chat and, and and see what what are the questions and then answer them uh, sequentially. Uh, if you feel that you need to talk, like you wanna, uh, for example, this have a discussion, feel free to do that. Oh, uh, you can raise your hand. Um, I, let me see if I, if you if I can share my screen. So this is the screen. I'm going to share it. Uh, so here you can raise your hand. If you click this icon, you can raise your hand uh, here, and then I, I will give you uh, permission. I mean to share audio and video if you want. And then you can talk to the entire class and uh, maybe ask a question or start a discussion about the topic. Uh, but you have to raise your hand first so that they can see uh, you and also give you the permission. If you have a simple question or uh, a couple of questions, a few questions, you can just write them on the chat. I will I will reply to the questions. Uh, like I will like I will discuss and answer your questions. I, I will not write. I will uh, actually. Uh, answer your questions uh, orally. Uh, so th this is uh, the way uh, it works. I have already created the virtual uh, classrooms for our systems one. So all of them are curated even during the reading week. So of course, during the reading week, you will, will not have any lectures or tutorials. So just uh, ignore the virtual cl uh, classes uh, created on Blackboard during the reading week. Okay. Um, so now let me share with you, I mean, the, the course syllabus and go through the uh, course contents, uh, the course assessments, patients uh, from you and also from the instructor and, and the GAs. So my screen. good so now I'm going to turn off my camera for now and then share my screen okay so this is the course uh, outline or syllabus then 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 structure information like this is Dr. Mehra Azuz teaching this course um, my office is actually in the third floor but since we are uh, off campus and everything is is, is done online so uh, it is not applicable to approach me in the office. The university is closed. Um, my office on Tuesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. Okay. And these office hours will be through Microsoft Teams. And I will, I will share with you the instructions on how to uh, approach me through Microsoft Teams uh, during the office hours. But it is going to be between 3 and 5 uh, p.m. Uh, is it uh, is it okay with you? Do you have labs during uh, these hours, uh, or I mean, or do you have like time to? I mean, most of you, I mean, uh, talking like, uh, do you have like maybe one hour or thirty minutes at least during this time slot so that you can talk to me or or call me through Microsoft Teams? If this time is over, it is holy conflicting with another lab or a course, let me know because I can change it. And that is why, um, okay. So when the office hours, Tuesdays, the office hours will be Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesdays after the lecture. Uh, oh, okay, so 
control. Oh, you have control. You have the controller. And uh, yeah, the control course is a mandatory course. Uh, okay. So let me. So what? What? Uh, what other slots you may uh, suggest? Like I wanna dedicate two hours. Okay, thirty days. Thirty days good. Okay, so let me check on schedule quickly. Monday, Monday I have a lecture, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Monday I have a lecture. So how about uh let me check my calendar? Thursdays, yeah, Thursdays is good for me. Thursdays between three and five PM. Three to five. How about that? Okay, so okay, so if it works for most of you guys, then I will keep it for now. And for those who have, I know, like there are other uh, elective courses. So, so for those who have conflicts with my office hours, we can book an appointment. Uh, Wednesdays, Wednesdays, yeah, Wednesdays fall for me. Okay, so for now, I will keep it on Thursdays from three. Uh, from three to five. Okay, taking my right note. So this is okay. Um, this is my email. You can always contact me uh, by email, uh, even outside of the office hours. Usually, I reply like within twenty four hours. Uh, so if you have a question, uh, if something is unclear, uh, you can email me and then we can arrange maybe an appointment or we can defer it till the uh, office hours, okay? Um, in this course, we have two GAs. Uh, we have uh, Abdullah Abu Nyaga, and this is the tutorial GA, and we have Animesh uh, Pondo Anet. And this, this is going to be the lab GA, okay? But during the lab, both GAs actually will attend uh, the lab. Um, the tutorial GA, since he gives the tutorials, will be, uh, you know, uh, familiar with the, like, familiar with the course contents. And, you know, he taught this course before several times. So he will be dedicating office hours. If you have any questions about the course contents or the tutorials, okay, or, or the project, which I'm gonna explain uh, later. Um, so he, he will dedicate two uh, hours, again, Thursdays between three and five. Uh, if you wanna me change it, I can make it on Mondays, uh, if you like Monday, so that you, we can have two, uh, two different office hours, two for me and two for the GA. How about Monday for the GA? Monday, okay. Okay, that is good. So Monday from three to five, this is gonna be for the GA. Okay. So um, for the office hours, you're gonna communicate with me or the GA through Microsoft Teams. And uh, for those who uh, didn't or are not familiar with Microsoft Teams, uh, you have like a free account. You can go to portaloffice.com and the university provides you with, I mean, uh, the, the Microsoft package. So you can use your uh, UNID and password uh, log in 
and then you can select uh, the Teams icon. Okay, like you will have different Microsoft uh, applications. I mean, Word, PowerPoint, uh, Excel, and so on. Among those applications, you can find that the Teams. Like, if let me try it with you now. If you go like this. It will take you to the packages, the different packages here. So Microsoft Teams is here. This is the icon of Microsoft Teams. If you click on it, you can download it, download I mean the software and install it, or you can access it online if you wish. So you have both options, but I prefer to have the application uh, installed on your desktop computer or your laptop, so you can download it. Okay, and install Microsoft Teams so that you can, I mean, uh, better share your screen in a, in a better way. You can also uh, give control to the instructor uh, and uh, also the instructor may, I mean, may also give you control or share his screen in a, in a smoother way. Okay, so once you download Teams on your desktop computer, you can, uh, he can, I mean, search for the instructor by his email or name. So if you type on the search, so let me open it. This is Teams. If you go here, and let's say go to chat and go to, let's say, write my name. Or because this is my account, let's say you write Dr. Benna, the department head. You'll find his name. And then you can click on it, the chat window will appear, and then you can say hello during the office hours. Okay. Like I will I will call you uh, when I'm available because I may be serving other students. So just say hello and I will call you if I'm available. If I'm not available, I will give you a number. Okay. Uh, and then call you later, maybe number one or two. So if I give you number two, it means that you are the second in the list. If I give you number three, you are in the third in the list. And typically it takes like 10 to 15 minutes uh, to serve one student. So if you are number three, uh, so we expect like 30 minutes uh, waiting time until the instructor or the GA uh, calls you, okay? So this is for uh, Teams. Uh, now uh, let's talk about the different components the different learning, uh, I mean, uh, modules in this course. So we have classes online, of course, through uh, uh, Blackboard. And we have also tutorials and labs. And the tutorials and labs are, are alternating. So um, you are giving only one slot for uh, the tutorials and labs, which is on Friday between 5 and 6.50 p.m. So we have only one slot uh, every week, okay? Uh, in this course, you will uh, you will uh, take three labs, three labs. So if we have 12 slots for tutorials and labs, nine will be for tutorials. I mean, solving problems, having discussions with you guys, uh, if you have any questions about the materials of the course. So this, this is gonna be nine sessions and three sessions for the labs. Okay. Okay. For for the tutorials, only the the the, the tutorial GA will be uh, participating. So here you will be dealing with Abdullah. But for the labs, it will be Abdullah and also the lab GA and myself. Uh, so we have a question left tomorrow, sir. No, I will. I will talk about the lab schedule once I talk about the course uh, content. Okay, so let's move to. Okay, so I expect you to dedicate three hours per week 
to study, I mean, the, the lectures, the tutorials, I mean, for projects. So typically three hours are enough to, I mean, to get a, a, good, a very good mark in this course, A or above, okay? Some students, you know, they just uh, attend lectures and uh, uh, tutorials and they don't study and they wait until the exams. This is not a good strategy. So my suggestion to you is to attend lectures online. Like do not uh, depend uh, or uh, rely only on the recorded lectures. Okay, so I'm gonna record the lectures like for those who may miss a lecture or two. But my suggestion too is to attend lectures. Like uh, uh, ask, I mean, an instructor in real time, communicate with an instructor in real time, do not just rely on recorded lectures because when when you re, when you delay uh, your duty, uh, you know these duties will be accumulated, and you will find a lot of lectures accumulated without any studying. So my my recommendation to you is to attend lectures on their uh, assigned or their uh, allocated times. Try to benefit from the instructors from the GAs as much as you can. So that like when you take the lecture or you take the slides back home, you just need to go over the slides, go over the examples, solve it by, uh, by yourself, uh, try to think about the answers before you look at the solutions and so on. So my suggestion too is uh, do not rely on the recorded lectures that much. You may actually use the recorded lectures just in case if you miss something or uh, you wanna actually uh, confirm something or something was unclear during the uh, real-time lecturing, but in my opinion, if you attend the lecture, attend the tutorial, you don't need to look at the records and just study. Uh, if you dedicate three hours per week, this is more than enough for our systems to get a very high mark, okay? Uh, for labs and activities, we have six hours. As I told you, we have three labs and each is two hours. So in total, six hours for labs. For tutorials, we have nine tutorials. If you multiply nine by two, you get 18 hours. For the group work, uh, you dedicate like two hours after the lab. So six hours for lab reports. So I will give you the chance to submit the lab reports immediately after the lab, because we will be working on the lab report uh, during the lab time. Many of the students, you know, submit the lab reports uh, even before the lab uh, ending time. So you can submit the report uh, exactly during the lab, like uh, completely during the lab time, or I will give you a week, I mean, to submit the lab report, okay? In case of, you know, you have something missed or, or you need to uh, revise it, uh, make sure that the results are correct. So you will be given one week after the lab to submit the lab report, but many, many, many of the students, I mean, submit the lab reports in the lab or immediately after that. For the project, uh, you will be given like uh, a month, I mean, to work, almost a month to work on the, on the project. And in my opinion, eight hours are enough for the project. And I allow uh, groups uh, to work, I mean, on the lab reports and also the projects. So two students are allowed to work on the project and also on the lab report. So you better bet your partner in the lab. There is no like restrictions. It is not gonna be assigned by the instructor or the GA. So you select your partner to work with you in the lab report. And you may also work with her or him in the project, okay? For the lectures, we have 12 uh, weeks and each is three hours, so it is 36 hours. Uh, for this, I, I, I estimate that we will have 10 hour discussions uh, during office hours and classes. Like the office hours are more than 10 hours. It is two hours per, uh, per week, but not, uh, you will not be using the entire office hours. Like you may have a question for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. So in total, I, I estimate that you, you would have like, uh, 10 hour uh, discussion throughout the, the semester. Um, the credit unit, as you know, it is three units. Uh, the course format, it is online. 
Okay, the prerequisite of this course, you know it, it is the circuits courses, like circuits one, uh, circuits two, uh, the electromechanical uh, systems. But according to the university website, you have to complete all courses uh, from first, second, and, and, and third years. This is actually uh, very conservative, but uh, I allow students to take my course if they uh, completed the circuits uh, courses as well as the electromechanical system course. Any questions? Uh, No questions so far. Okay, now let's talk about the course description. Um, in this course, I will be talking about the principles or explaining the principles of uh, power system operation. Uh, I will give you an introduction to renewable energy sources and also the conventional energy sources. Uh, modeling and analysis of electric power systems. How we model a power system? What are the main components in a power system? Like in a power system, we have a lot of uh, elements, a lot of components. But in any power system, we have four main components that I will be explaining extensively throughout this course. Uh, we will talk about the complex power, uh, phasers, the perionic analysis, how to uh, normalize uh, uh, the voltage and current quantities so that we can generalize our analysis to any power system, uh, regardless of its voltage level. As you will learn, power systems can be um, established at different voltage levels. It could be low voltage, as the systems that we see in cities, it could be medium voltage, uh, in rural areas, or it could be high voltage between cities, uh, as you will learn. Okay, I will talk about uh, different power system components like the modeling power transformers, uh, generators, uh, transmission lines. Uh, and, and lastly, I will talk about the power flow analysis. This is the ultimate goal of, uh, of power systems one, is to learn how to uh, control or how the power flows from one point to another point in a power system. So if you learn how to uh, how to analyze a power system or how the power flows from a point to another point, you can control this power flow. And you can ensure that the system is working properly and all the technical constraints or all the technical limits are uh, satisfied and we are not exceeding any limits. So this is the ultimate goal of our systems uh, one. Uh, we will be working from two textbooks. The main one or the primary textbook is Power Systems Analysis by Hadi Sadat. Okay. Uh, and the additional one, the second one is Power System Analysis and Design, the fifth edition by uh, Glover and Dr. Tom Overbond. Uh, also, I'll share with you I mean, all the lecture notes, uh, solutions of uh, tutorials, okay? And also some models for the labs. I mean, I, when I talk about models, I'm, I'm talking about the simulation models that you will be using to solve uh, some of the lab questions. And those simulation models uh, can be extended to solve the project, which I will talk about. Uh, today. So the implied contract, so here, like, this is something that I encourage you to read. Um, I expect you to prepare for the class. Um, I will try my best to provide high quality teaching, uh, provide differentiating uh, assessment, um, establish an educational environment, conductive learning, um, I will try to encourage you to, 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 to solve problems on your own, uh, try to analyze power systems, and from your observations, you will judge what to do and what not. Okay, so this is something for you to read. Um, the course schedule, 
this is actually the detailed course schedule for those who ask it about the labs. So this week, we will not have any lab. Okay. Uh, the first week is actually an introductory week. So the GA will review with you the AC circuits uh, or AC circuit analysis and try to solve the first assignment. Not all, not all problems in the first assignment, but uh, a few problems. And this is, I don't want to call it assignment because you, you will not be assessed on the problems of these uh, assignments. So the assignments for you to think about it before you come to the lab, uh, to the tutorial, but the, the GA will solve most of the problems and those assignments will not be marked. Okay, but I encourage you to read uh, the assignments, try to think about solutions because the GA may have, uh, may initiate discussions or have ideas on how you collaborate and solve the assignment problems in, uh, like, uh, uh, in, in the tutorial uh, I mean, allocated time. So the first uh, week is actually a revision for the AC circuits because power systems are AC, not DC for now. Uh, the modern power system is trying to shift the DC sy uh, systems. Uh, this is something that I will discuss when I talk about power systems, why, like uh, AC versus DC, what are the advantages of AC systems versus DC systems. But in today's lecture, um, I will just give you uh, an introduction about power systems and uh, the course syllabus. Uh, and most, like 90, over 90% 90 or 95% of the infrastructure for power systems is AC, not DC. And I will, ex I will explain why, hopefully, in today's lecture. Uh, okay, so this is the first week. I will discuss with you the syllabus. In lecture two, I will give you an introduction to power systems and electric power generation. Uh, in the second week, I will do the same. I will complete the introduction, the different components of power systems, how a power system works, uh, how we control the power, the frequency, and so on. Uh, in lecture four, I will start introducing some concepts related to AC circuit analysis. You may have uh, learned that in uh, the second circuit uh, course, I mean circuit analysis. But I will revise it and also introduce the idea of power factor correction. Uh, in the third week, I will talk about complex power flow, uh, balance of three phase circuits, uh, the different connections of transformers, start connection, delta connection. What are the advantages? What are what what is the most used uh, connection? And, uh, in, in distribution system or in transmission system and so on. What are the benefits and drawbacks of each connection? Okay. Um, and, 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 and the fourth week, I will start talking about one of the main components of any power system. So let me look at your questions. Um, uh, here, that I have to read and read this course from some reason it was in short. So I hope like, like the course is available to everyone and see the resources and uh, and also the the I mean the, the course listed on like it. Um, the tutorials are for marks. Uh, the tutorials like the 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 GA will attend. I mean the uh, will will collect the attendance. Okay, for tutorials. Uh, so let me let me complete how we assess. Uh, I mean, your learning uh, in power systems, and then uh, you will understand how how marks are distributed between different assessment methods. Uh, okay, so okay, so let me share with you this slide. Okay, so the most popular form of energy is electric energy because it can be transferred efficiently and economically. We can transfer energy over hundreds of miles from the source, let's say a nuclear 
power plant or a thermal power plant, a hydro power plant to the load center. So the, the, the power station could be, or the, the, the power plant or the generation power plant could be, in, let's say in, in Oshawa, and the customers are served in one zone. Okay, this is the main advantage of electric energy that we can transfer electric energy over long distances at a much lower loss. Okay, uh, the efficiency of power systems. So the power system is about the net, the lines that actually carries the the power from the source to the load center. Okay, so this power network is very efficient. The efficiency could reach 95% or more. Why is that? I will explain the reason in the next slide, but this is, this is actually the main advantage of electric energy is the, uh, the ease and uh, the environmentally, uh, like um, the environmentally uh, efficient uh, systems that can be used to transfer power from sources to uh, node centers. Okay, so if you look here at a typical power system layout, we have the power plant here. You can see the little pointer. So this is the power plant. It could be thermal or nuclear. It could be renewable based or hydro power, something like that. So the power is typically generated at a medium volt, not high voltage or low voltage. So this medium voltage, as I will explain in the next uh, lecture, I will explain the ranges, what, uh, what is the medium voltage, what is the low voltage, and what is the high voltage, but 12 kilovolt is the medium voltage. It is not high or low. And this voltage is not enough, is not high enough to serve or to transfer the electric power from the source to the load. So here is the load. It could be in Windsor, could be in London, and this power plant could be uh, in Oshawa. So we have like 300 kilometers. We can have a 300 kilometer between the source and the load. Okay. So the first step is to increase the voltage. So we have to boost the voltage from medium to high voltage, like 400, 500 kilovolts. This could be also 500. Okay, and that is why we we build long like high towers to create an insulation between the hot line. So this is the hot the 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 power line, which is not uh, isolated. Like it is not, for example, wrapped by paper or plastic. So this is this is made of aluminum, not covered by anything, because it is very costly. Even if you want to cover it, the plastic will not be enough to isolate, uh, I mean, this high voltage. We have to create it from a special material, which is very expensive. And that is why we use the air, because the air is pretty much a good insulator to, uh, to isolate this hot power line from the ground. So the idea is to make sure that we have enough space between the, the, the line and the ground to isolate this line. And as you increase the voltage, you have to increase the height from the ground to uh, the power line. So uh, like if you see like high towers, this, this is an indication that the voltage is really high. And uh, the higher the voltage, the cooler the, the, the transmission towers. Okay, but this voltage is not safe. We cannot, I mean, supply our uh, appliances or equipment at high voltage or even medium voltage. Okay, because we can get electric electrocuted easily uh, at medium or high voltage. So we have to step down the voltage. So that we need to use step down transformers to step the voltage like on steps. So as we approach the customers, we reduce the voltage to a safe range, which is 240. This is face-to-face -face voltage. And this could be, if you use only one phase, it's going to be 110 or 120. Okay. 
And that is why, I, I mean, the towers, uh, I mean, like here you can see the T field wall, this is a medium voltage. The towers are not that high. The towers are not that high as compared to, I mean, the, the towers you see on the highways. Okay. So why we transfer power at high voltage? So the question is, why, why high voltage? Okay. Um, you know that the power losses is actually a power dissipated in the resistance of the line. So this line is, is actually a conductor, but it has a resistance and an inductance. Any line, regardless of the length of the line, the configuration uh, of, I mean, the, the three-phase circuit, the height of the tower, at the, at the end of the day, from the electrical perspective, it is going to be modeled by a resistance and an inductor. And the current flowing through the line, through the transmission line, will create losses, and the losses will be dissipated in the resistance of this line. So the power losses can be calculated by squaring the current and multiplying this trend by R. Okay. And the voltage drop across the impedance of the line, so this is the impedance, there's the voltage drop. So what I mean by voltage drop, if the voltage here is 100%, I mean the, the voltage at the sending end is 100%, due to the voltage drop across this impedance, it will be uh, received, let's say, at 90%. So the 10% voltage difference between the receiving end voltage and the sending end voltage is called voltage drop. And this voltage drop is proportional to the current. So the losses is proportional to the current squared, and the voltage drop is proportional to the current. Okay. Increase the voltage, as you increase the voltage, now we want to answer this question, why we transfer power at high voltage? As we increase the voltage, we know that the power is equal to the voltage times the current. So as you increase the voltage, the current will drop, because this power it's constant. Why this power is constant? Because it is related to the capacity of the power plant. Let's say if this power plant is 100 megawatt. So the maximum power that this power plant can generate and, of course, transfer is 100 megawatt. Okay? So if this power plant is operating at 70% of its capacity, then the power will be constant at 70 megawatt. If this power plant is, over, is operating at its full capacity, then this power plant will generate 100 megawatt. So the power is constant. The power that is generated by a power plant is known and it is constant. So if you increase the voltage, you will increase the current. So what will, what would happen if we increase, if we decrease the current, we will reduce the losses exponentially because the losses is proportional to I squared. And also we will decrease the voltage drop so instead of having 10% voltage drop, as I'm showing here in this example, it could be 5%. So the receiving voltage could be 95% of the rated voltage, which is good because we want to keep the voltage as close as possible to the rated value. Okay, Because as you decrease the voltage, the equipment performance will be deteriorated. And this is something you may see if you look at the lamp. If the voltage, if there's a fault in the system and the voltage is flickering, you will see that the lamp is also, the light from the lamp is also flickering. Okay? So according to uh, the IEEE standards and the other standards, we have to keep the voltage within 5% or could be 10%. It depends on the system and the area. But we cannot have the voltage uh, below 10%, uh, below 90% or we cannot allow a voltage drop beyond 10%, okay? So the power losses and the voltage drop should decrease uh, as we uh, increase the voltage, okay? Another reason why we increase the voltage is to increase the power transfer capability. And this is something that I will explain later in the course. So if you increase the voltage, this line, this line can maybe 
uh, double the power that can be transferred. So let's say if this line can transfer only, uh, let's say a current of 100 amps. Okay, at a voltage of 100 volt. I'm just giving very simple example. Okay, if you double the voltage, okay, you can double the power because the power is, is the power through the line, the power through the line is the voltage multiplied by the current. Okay, so increasing the voltage can also increase the, the power transfer capability. Okay, but we have to pay for that because as you increase the voltage, you have to increase the power height, as I mentioned before. Okay, you have also to inc like you have to use better insulators. Okay, this is something that I will discuss uh, in more details later, uh, not now. So this is basically uh, what we're gonna. Uh, be focusing on the power system, and there are four components. There are four components in any power system. The line, I think there's something wrong with the PowerPoint presentation. So we have four components. We have the transmission line, We have transformers. We have generators. And we have loads. So these are the main components in any power system. Okay. So we'll discuss models to these components so that we can simulate the power system and assess its performance. Now let's switch to the course syllabus. Let me see if you have any questions. Okay. Um, so we have, is it like BV equals NRT? Uh, I do I is it something related to, I mean, the, the thermodynamics, I think? <laughs> I don't remember, I mean, thermodynamics, like here, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, um, let me switch to the course syllabus and content. Okay, so um, as a told you, we have four components. So I will uh, explain the model of generators. The main generator in any power system is the synchronous generator. Okay, and then I'll talk about transformers, the regulating transformers, how to control the voltage, how to control the power through transformers. So we can use transformers to control the voltage as well as the power. And this is actually the main idea behind the project. So the project will be focusing on the usage of the regulating transformers, how to use the regulating transformers, in a power system such that you control the power and also the voltage across uh, loads. And then I will also talk about models for transmission lines. Um, we will have three labs, as I mentioned before. The first one is an introduction, and it will be covering the power factor correction. The second one will be about transformer modeling. Okay, And after completing the second lab, you will be ready to work on the part. And that's why I will give you almost one month. It, it doesn't need like a month to finish the project. As I told you, like eight hours could be enough to finish the project, but I will give you like one month. So the deadline for the project will be March 30th. This is to submit the project report. Um, the midterm, uh, will be uh, on February 27th. This is Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it will be online via Blackboard. So I will share with you the, the, the exam instructions. Um, I'm going to create a virtual uh, 
classroom on Blackboard. So uh, to share, I mean, uh, the exam with you, uh, you work on it at home, and then you will submit it through a Dropbox that I will create. So basically, you will have that the, the midterm exam on a, on a, as an assignment. You download it. You work individually, of course, in the midterm and final exams, and then submit it to uh, the Dropbox that I will create. But also, I will create a virtual classroom for that exam on Blackboard. Just if you have a question, uh, something is unclear. Uh, this is like I'm not I'm not gonna put it fracturing because we cannot force watch you. But at least if you need any help during the exam time. Uh, you will find me and the GAs available for, for assistance. Um, okay, and after that, after finishing the transmission line components and modeling, um, I will explain how to model a system using the bus admittance matrix. Okay, then I will, I will give you some methods to assess the power flow or to analyze the power system using the power flow tool. So we'll be using two methods, the gauss zeitel power flow and the interruption. Uh, and the last lab will be on power flow, okay? Um, this is lab three. For lab three, I will, I will try to make it as short as possible so that you can submit the lab reports on time. Uh, because this will be like the last lab, the last week, so I will, I will not make it intense or um, long so that you can finish it on time and submit it. This is for lab three. Uh, any questions? What is the name of the software? Yeah. Uh, the software that we're using is uh, the Power World Simulator. Power. Uh, and this is uh, available through the university server. Um, like uh, Mark has installed it. So if you go to. Uh, there's like there is an instruction uh like i will ask the ga to share it with you so there's i think access portal something access tabs this is a software if you install it you can use your uh you answer uh email uh you write here econnect.unz.ca and then you write password log in Um, let me start again. So, if you log in, then you will see CLA lab and uh, engineering, I think, is it is the engineering lab, I guess. Go to desktop, it will take some time to load. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see my screen or not. Let me. It takes some time. It, it could take like a minute or two to load your uh, account. So. It, it will take some time. But anyway, once you log in, So once you look in, uh, you will find the software. I mean, the GA will actually show you how to use it. Like the first lab is actually an introduction to the Power Wireless Simulator. What are the tools? Uh, what are the features that this software uh, uh, provides? Okay. So uh, don't worry about. I mean, how to use the, the lab? Like we will go through it step by step. It is not a, a coding software. Is not like C or Java or no, it's it's a software dedicated to power system simulations. Okay, uh, now let's move to yeah. So the midterm exam, back to the midterm exam. Um, do you have any concern about the schedule of the midterm exam? 
So it will be after the reading week. The reading week is between 13th and 21st of February. Uh, it will be a week after the reading week. So it will be like February 27th. This is Saturday from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. Do you have any commitments? Okay, so that is good. So for now, the midterm exam schedule is confirmed. You have two weeks, guys. If you find any issue or anything, just let me know by email, and I will try to discuss it with you uh, in the next lecture to see if we can rearrange it uh, and put it in a, in a different time slot. Okay. Um, so this is for the course content. Uh, these are the important dates. Uh, the midterm exam is February 27. The last uh, date to uh, BW the course uh, is March 17th. The last day of, uh, of classes is April 7th. The final exam is not uh, determined yet. I mean the, the schedule, but it will be online, similar to the midterm exam. Okay. Uh, the learning outcomes of this course are listed here in this table. So I encourage you to go over it and read it. Of course, we will cover all these uh, learning outcomes during the lectures, but it is good to know uh, what you will learn and what, what, what you expect out of this course in case if you have any questions or something is unclear during uh, lectures. Uh, now, let's talk about the evaluation method. Okay, during, I mean, the the last one hour I was talking about the project, class, tutorials. This table summarizes, I mean, the evaluation method. So you would have tutorials and labs. So the tutorials, uh, it will not be assessed. Like it is, it, the tutorial is basically, you will not be, you're not supposed to submit any solutions to the assignments. As I told you, the GA will solve most of the problems of the assignments, but I encourage you to read the assignments and try to solve the problems in the assignments before the tutorial. So it is uh, it is all about the participation. So the tutorial portion is about the participation, the attendance, mainly. Okay, this could be like three percent or five percent. The labs is the remaining. So the labs is twelve percent of the mark. Twelve marks are dedicated to the labs. So four marks each. So we have three labs. Each lab is four marks. The project is 10 marks. And as I told you, after finishing the second lab, you will be able to finish the project. So the project is actually uh, like it's a software assignment. You can solve it using the hardware simulator, the software I just talked about. Let me see if my screen is loaded. Yeah, so my screen is loaded now. Uh, it's here. Yeah, so this is my account. This is the virtual. Can you see it? Not sure if you can see this. Um, so, yes, okay, so let me go. So if you type here simulator, you will get the software. This is the software that we'll be using. Okay. So after um, downloading the the server app, access pad, access pad. This is the name of the uh, remote desktop uh, connection or app. You will find the software. I will give you like a system. You need to model this system using the power world simulator. You need to uh, control uh, the transformers. Uh, so that you can regulate the voltage and the power flow of different uh, through different transmission lines. So this is basically the idea of the project. So if you understand the first two labs well, you understand the course materials well, you can easily finish this project, in my opinion, in less than eight hours. If you work with a partner, you can finish everything and write it. It is not going to be an um, essay-based project. It is actually a simulation-based project. You model the system, you put screenshots of your model, comment on the results, and uh, report the results. 
that's all. So this is for the project. Let me switch. Uh, I'm gonna close this and also close this aggregate. Okay, so it is 10 marks. Uh, there will be two quizzes, okay? And I will ask the GA to give you one week notice before the quiz. And the quiz will be conducted during the tutorial time, okay? Like 15 minutes or 10 mi or, or 20 minutes maximum. Okay, it will be one question, okay? And uh, the GA will tell you what topics will be covered in this quiz. As I told you, maximum is five marks or 5% 5 of the total mark. Uh, the midterm exam, this is 30%, uh, but it's not going to be closed book. It is going to be actually take home. So I'm going to change that. Same thing for the final exam. It's going to be take home. So the final exam is 40% and the midterm exam is 30%. This is the, the grading mechanism. Uh, late and missed assignments reports. Uh, late assignments will be deducted 10% per day, up to three days, after which they will receive zero mark. If you have any reason or any excuse, uh, of course, I will not deduct any more, but you have to contact me first and try your best, I mean, to uh, communicate with an instructor or the GA before the deadline, okay? Uh, for makeup tests, um, if you miss the midterm exam, of course you have to get like a reason, a medical reason or something from the associate dean. And then typically I transfer the credit of the midterm exam to the final, okay? Um, electronic devices aside from your calculators are not allowed, but again, uh, you have to show all the steps. I, I cannot judge this. If the exams are take home, I cannot judge it, but you have to show me the steps. If you just write the final answer of a question, of course, you'll not get uh, the full mark. Um, the set of scores will be online, and this is the link uh, that you can actually uh, use to see all the instructions uh, uh, of of how to submit your uh, set scores. And I will, I will try to administrate the set scores in the last two weeks uh, of, the, of the course. So I will give you, like, let's say, a break during the lecture, 10 minutes or so. I will open these instructions with you guys, and then you submit uh, your evaluation for the course and also the instructor. Uh, exams and fire alarms, this is not applicable. Uh, the course is online. Um, and then attendance, the attendance to the tutorials and labs is mandatory, but for lectures, it is not mandatory. Okay, so you can skip lectures. Again, I do recommend that. I want you to actively participate in the lecture, attend the lectures, le like communicate with the instructor in real time, and do not delay lectures. If you okay, rely on recorded lectures, as I mentioned before, it will be accumulated and you will actually miss the track. Um, you can communicate with me, as I mentioned, by email or also through Microsoft Teams. Uh, group work is encouraged. You will be working in the lab and also in the project, uh, forming groups, like maximum two students are allowed per group, by the way. You can work individually or choose only one partner. Three students are not allowed their group, only, ma only two, maximum two. Uh, academic integrity, you know that is very important, uh, not to cheat, not to collaborate outside your group, uh, not to share your solutions, okay? And I encourage you to read uh, the University of Windsor Bylaw 31 about the plagiarism. And recently, because of online teaching and online education, some students, they share their tests and exams through online uh, services like uh, like uh, CH, EGG, or CHEG, I don't know this. Again, I have written this uh, paragraph and make it bold, 
Okay, so uploading of a test, exam, assignment, laboratory, or project questions, or downloading the posted answers from any web page, check, or other online services is a breach of the academic integrity. Because one of the instructor in the previous semester have noted that many students have cheated or have copied the solutions from uh, or shared their solutions through a website, like check, wherever. Okay. And all, all these students actually uh, were transferred to the assistant dean's office. So if you find the solution of an exam or a question online and you copy it and put it, this actually doesn't free you from uh, being questioned. Okay, so make sure that work uh, on your own. If it is an exam, assignment, if it's a project, okay, you can work with your partner. If it's a lab report, it, you are allowed to work with your partner, but do not collaborate with other groups. Okay, so academic integrity violation will be dealt with according to bylaw 31. So typical sanctions for a first offense range from a zero grade to a formal censure listed on your transcript. You don't want to do that, of course. You don't want to have anything uh, on your transcripts about integrity. Okay, so you better lose a mark than having something written in your, in your transcript, okay? So I know that it, it didn't happen to me at the undergraduate level. I mean, I didn't see like a, a bridge or plagiarism at the undergraduate level, uh, but I, I'm trying to warn you just in case because uh, other colleagues have noted that students, they share questions, they share, they share answers on uh, web pages and, and other online services. And students think they are, okay, no, we found it. it's an online uh, exam. It's a take-home exam. We are free to do whatever we want. No, you're not free. Uh, you have to you have to comply with the uh, bylaw 31. Academic integrity is a must, okay? Like at the university level, we are not only learning technical stuff. We are learning uh, how to be a professional or professional in the future. To be a professional, you have to have integrity, transparency, okay, and respect, of course. Um, supplemental privileges uh, uh, will be given. It is allowed if you satisfy the conditions. I, I understand this is a fourth year course, okay. So if you fail my course and it is the only course that prevents you from graduation, I will be happy to assist you and make a supplemental exam for you. But do your best and pass the course from the first time. Do not rely on a supplemental exam. Okay. Some instructors do not allow supplemental examination, but since you are in the fourth year and you like, like you actually, uh, you are about to graduate. So uh, like this privilege uh, will be provided. You, you don't need to wait for the next year to take my course again, but this is not, uh, this is not like, my recommendation, I'm not recommending you to rely on the supplemental exam. Do your best. This is not a hard course. Many students get above 70, 75%. So try to be among those students. Uh, of course, like I may use the turn it on feature on Blackboard to check for plagiarism. Okay, there's no need for it actually because most of the courses that you will be uh, submitting are take like uh, numeric, not essay based. Uh, so it's not that uh, important. But the G of course will differentiate, will, will assess your reports and see if, if there is copying or uh, similar answers and so on. Uh, this is the accreditation attributes. Again, I encourage you to read it. I'm not gonna go through it. Uh, this course will be focusing on engineering, science, and design. So it will not introduce any new mathematical concepts. This is not a math course. It will be using what you have already built. I mean, the background that you have uh, in math, in signals and systems and circuits, and uh, the background that you built in the second and third year to flourish and build on it and uh, like for the sake of engineering science and engineering design. 
So 70%, 75% is engineering science. How a system works, how to model a system, how to operate a system. So this is engineering science. The design will be related to the project. How to tune a phase shifting transformer or a voltage regulating transformer to regulate the voltage or the power. How to correct the power factor. So this is about the design. So 25% is dedicated to the design. 75% is about the science of our system or the engineering science, of course. It's not a pure science. Okay. Um, there are services available to students at the University of Windsor. Uh, these are the websites for these services, like the disability services, the counseling, the advising, um, the personal success, the steps. All these websites are uh, helpful. Um, if you need any assistance, you can, of course, approach uh, these uh, services and, uh, I mean, the service providers and try to uh, get help. Okay, so this ends, I mean, uh, the course syllabus. Okay, uh, now I would like to listen to your questions. Any questions, guys? Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, revise the course outline. I'm gonna change my office hours. Uh, I will also uh, make uh, or correct any typing errors. Uh, like for example, the midterm and final exams are take home. They are not uh, in person. Okay, or they are not closed book because at, at your home, you are free to do whatever you want. Okay, um, so I'm gonna revise the, the course online and the syllabus and post it on Blackboard. Uh, and if uh, you have any um, questions and concerns about the course, uh, feel free to email me or approach me during the office hours. And yeah, this ends uh, today's lecture and talk to you next week. And, and by the way, the GA before, uh, yeah, before finishing, the GA will uh, review the AC circuit uh, basics and, uh, uh, and analysis this Friday. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you have lab, post in lab one soon. Uh, no, lab one is scheduled if we go back to the course schedule. Lab one is actually in the fourth week. This is lab one. So at least three weeks from now. Okay. Okay, guys, thank you very much for attending today's lecture and talk to you next week.